Hi, today we are looking at section 10.2, which deals with a circle. So this is the first conic that we are looking at. Conics are essentially the various shapes that we can cut out of cones. So if we cut horizontally across a cone, we can get a circle. So that will be our first equation that we'll be looking at. So the circle in standard form is if our circle is centered at zero, zero and has a radius of r, our equation is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, as we found out from other graphs, we often have horizontal and vertical translations of graphs, which would mean that we could have it centered somewhere else, in which case, as usual, our h is our horizontal translation, while k is our vertical translation, and this equation becomes x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h comma k is our center of the circle, and our r is still our radius. Example, the equation of a circle is x plus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 64. We want to determine the radius and the location of the center of the circle, then sketch the circle and identify the domain and range. So first thing I'll do is compare this with our equation from a previous page. Okay, so first thing you ask about is radius. We can see that this 64 corresponds to our r squared. So if we take the square root of 64, we get a radius of 8. And then we'll look at where our center is. So if we have x plus 3 here, that must mean that h is equal to negative 3. So when we substitute in here, we have a negative of a negative giving us this positive. So the x value of the center of our circle is negative 3. And then this gives us a k value of 1. So therefore, the center of our circle is negative 3 comma 1. We will now sketch a circle out. So we have a center negative 3 comma 1, so at negative 3, positive 1. Then we have a radius of 8. I realize I just put this in the wrong spot. So negative 3, positive 1 would be here. Radius of 8, so that means we're going to be 8 units above this. 8 units to left, 8 units to right. and eight units below. So essentially our graph should look something like this. Now for our domain and range, We can see we're going from negative 11 to positive 5. For our domain, for our range, which deals with our y values, we are going from negative 7 to positive 9. What you'll notice is you can get those values without graphing it simply by looking at where our center is and where our radius is. Because if we have negative 3 minus 8, that gives us negative 11. Negative 3 plus 8 gives us our 5. Then to get our range, we look at our y value. So 1 minus 8 gives us our negative 7. 1 plus 8 gives us our 9. Now we have another form of this equation, which isn't necessarily as useful for 
graphing, which is our general form of a circle. So it takes the form of ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals zero. Now this has some restrictions, which will be important to pay attention to because we'll have some similar formulas where essentially we have the same formula, but different restrictions for different shapes of graphs. So we have A has to equal B. If these are different numbers, it's no longer going to be a circle because it will mean that they have stretched or compressed by a different amount. We also need those squared terms. So A cannot equal zero and B cannot equal zero. So do an example with general form. The circle centered at the origin was translated. The equation of the image of the circle is x squared plus y squared plus 12x minus 6y plus 20 equals 0. Determine the radius and the coordinates of the center of the circle. So to change this into the other form that helps us for graphing and figure out where the center of our circle is, we're going to do something that we did in pre-calculus 11, which is completing the square. Now we're going to do that with both our x values and our y values. So I'd start out by rearranging this, putting our x terms together. So we've got x squared plus 12x. And then I'll leave some space here. And then we'll have plus y squared minus 6y. I'll leave some space. And then we've got plus 20 equals zero. So if you remember from completing the square, we had to put a blank in that was positive and then a blank in that was negative. We'll do that for each of these. Now in that blank is essentially our B value divided by two and squared. So 12 divided by two is six, six squared gives us 36. So we've got plus 36 and minus 36. Do the same thing here. So we've got Negative six divided by two is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. So we've got plus nine minus nine. What that has done is created two perfect square trinomials. So this here is a perfect square trinomial, as is this. So from pre-calculus 11, you should know how to factor this. So this becomes x plus six squared. And then this becomes y minus three squared. And then combining these, negative 36 minus nine is negative 45, plus 20 is negative 25. We'll move the 25 to the other side. So we've got x plus six squared plus y minus three squared equals 25. Now we get a radius from this. So our radius is equal to a square root of 25, which is just going to be five. And our center is at negative six comma three. 